you go. Mm -hmm. uh, good evening, good evening, everybody. Um, I've got a brief statement to make. Tonight at about 9.30, I declared a state of local emergency for the Auckland region. I did so immediately after receiving advice from the Auckland Emergency Management Duty Controller that this step should be taken. Following the request from emergency services, including police, fire and emergency and St John's. Thousands of Auckland emergency workers are putting themselves at risk across the region tonight. My declaration reflects the gravity of the situation caused by this evening's severe weather event and enables those emergency services and response agencies to draw upon additional resources and gives them the additional powers to assist affected Aucklanders. In particular, the declaration enables them to carry out evacuation procedures. I've been in my office this whole evening and have been receiving constant updates on the situation from Auckland Emergency Management, including the Deputy Controller Andrew Clark next to me here. I've also been in regular contact with the Minister for Emergency Management, Kieran McAnulty, and I'd like to appreciate, uh, appreciate his support. As noted, I made this declaration of emergency immediately upon receiving the official advice from the duty controller that I should do so. And this came following the request from the emergency services. It would not have been appropriate for me to act before that point. As Mayor, I said it is my job to support our emergency services and our controller so that they can do their work. I have received reports that someone has lost their life during this event. I'm deeply saddened by that and I'd like to extend my deepest sympathies to the family of that person. This is going to be a horrible night for thousands of Aucklanders and their families. My thoughts are with those Aucklanders affected, including many of those who have been evacuated from their homes and have a hard night ahead. Our emergency services are working hard as possible for you. I want to thank our emergency services and the team here for their hard work and dedication in what I know are very difficult circumstances. I'm urging residents affected by the flooding to help by staying safe, staying home if possible, and taking advice from the emergency responders. We want to make sure that all residents are kept informed and emergency services are able to reach those who are most vulnerable and at risk as quickly as possible. Do not put yourself at risk or them at risk. I'll now pass on to duty controller Andrew Clark before we take any questions. Andrew. Thank you, Mayor. <clears throat> Um, good evening, my name is Andrew Clark, uh, and I'm Auckland Emergency Management Duty Controller. Um, late, late this afternoon, following um, uh, our active monitoring of a volatile weather system heading towards Auckland, uh, I activated Auckland Emergency Management's Emergency Coordination Centre. Uh, our team has this evening worked alongside emergency services uh, and partner agencies from across Auckland uh, to respond to what has been a devastating storm event that has wreaked havoc on many of our communities. As Mayor Brown has said, that work and the impact of the storm has culminated in a declaration of a state of local emergency. We don't yet know the full impact of the storm event, uh, including how many people have had to leave their homes uh, or have sustained lasting damage. Continued efforts through the night and daylight tomorrow uh, will uh, help us get a clearer picture. Uh, in the meantime, it's important that we focus on helping those that need us right now. Civil Defence Centres are being set up. Uh, one is already in place in Kelston, uh, and we're working on standing up a further site on the North Shore uh, and in the South uh, of Auckland as we speak. These centres will be a space for respite and a step to finding alternative accommodation for those that need it. We know that many people are being helped by friends and whanau. Uh, it's situations like this where communities come together 
uh, to help each other out, and we're already we've already seen and heard many magnificent examples of this. Uh, lastly, I'll make, I'd like to make a call out to people with neighbours or whānau uh, who might be on their own, vulnerable, uh, or need help. Please check that they're okay and keep in touch over the next few days as the clean-up begins. We'll be providing updates via Auckland Emergency Management social media channels uh, and communicating through the media, so please make sure you stay up to date on any new developments. Uh, so that's, that's my uh, statement update. Mayor Brown, there has been some criticism of the speed it took to declare the local state of emergency, including from a councillor. What do you say to that? There has been some speculation that I could have acted sooner, but I couldn't have. This is a formal process not to be taken lightly. Um, so Josephine Bartley, uh, one councillor, said that it was clear a local state of emergency needed to be declared prior to receiving advice and that you could have done so. What do you say to that? As I said, I couldn't act sooner. It's a formal process. It has, has to be followed and it's not to be taken lightly and it has consequences. And so I've listened to the professionals in the field, the professionals who've been out there reporting back to their control centre. We have been on standby to receive the correct time for me to sign that and immediately I was given that uh, call to make that decision. I did so. And what do you say to Aucklanders uh, who have expressed their disappointment about some of the communication woes and that speed for the declaration? Well, we have been waiting here and picking up on um, reports from the field all evening long and I rely upon the professionals to tell me exactly what steps to take and I have followed those precisely. Is this anything like you've ever seen before in terms of these weather events? This one is as intense as anything we've seen, but it covered a much wider region than what, what, has, uh, what has happened before. Have Personally, you? I have been involved in one or two in the past, and um, careful assessment is important. Careful steps not rush steps. Do you feel enough preparation was undertaken ahead of this? I think that's a question yeah. which is probably better answered by sure. Andrew. Sure. sure. So look, just on your first point, the Met Service advice was that the intensity of this event was similar to the West Auckland um, incident we had a couple of years ago, um, but it was broader and longer. Uh, and in fact, the advice was it's not going to dissipate um, uh, south until midnight. Um, so it's been long, it's been intense, and it's been very, very broad across the whole city. Um, so we, we've been working on this as soon as the weather system became apparent as being severe. The declaration is, is a step that's taken to support emergency services in the field to give them the resources and the powers that they need, depending on the state of the emergency. Um, so it's just part of a, a, a step and a, and a process that's been rolling for since late afternoon as we got um, a sense of the scale of this. Um, it's dependent on uh, need and as soon as the need was assessed that powers and resources needed to be such that emergency services could do what they needed to do, particularly in terms of evacuation of people, um, that requires additional statutory powers which is why the emergency declaration was issued. Um, but it's not, a, it's not a function of the emergency response, it's a step in the process. Do you have a, maybe for both of you actually, do you have a message for Aucklanders who are sitting at home, you know, perhaps their homes have been flooded um, and are really just wondering, you know, what next from here? What, what's next? There'll be regular updates via the social media channels. We're focusing right now, given it's 11 o'clock at night, <clears throat> on setting up those evacuation centres as quickly as we can. Um, something that's probably not uh, known is that um, we have a number of these evacuation centres um, available to us. That's part of our planning process. Unfortunately, a lot of those were compromised by the flooding event themselves. So as part of going out and assessing where we could put people, it became apparent we couldn't put them in those centres. So we've had to move very, very quickly, and we are, uh, to set up centres in the right geographical hubs for people to go to. So um, emergency um, personnel on the ground will be able to, to help people and direct them if they need that sort of support. Uh, and we'll also have regular communications on 
um, where those centres are and, and what that process will involve. You touched on uh, a death before, what information do you have about that? Uh, we only have what the police have told us, which was uh, a fatality on the North Shore, I believe, um, uh, in a culvert, and, and we don't have any more information than that, so I'd rather not sort of speculate about that. But, but it is related to the flooding, it is related to the weather? It, it could be, and until the police confirm what's happened, we, we, we don't know. And what does your day look like tomorrow as Mayor? I think daylight will be very welcome, uh, and uh, along with council staff and emergency people, we will be assessing what damage has occurred and what steps are to be taken next. And, and hopefully Aucklanders will um, shoulder some local uh, responsibility and help, help those around them. It'll be a major, major job uh, and I will take advice from um, the, the experts whose field that is and, uh, and, and encourage Aucklanders um, to help wherever they can. Will you be going out to see some of these communities tomorrow and to look at the damage yourself? Of course. Are you confident uh, that throughout the evening communication has been appropriate and, and good enough for the public? We've communicated um, information as soon as it's come to hand. Um, this was a very intense, fast-moving weather event and we needed to get people out in the field to assess what was actually happening. As soon as we got um, intelligence on that, um, we're in a position to communicate it, but we didn't want to speculate until we got people on the ground. And remember, this was very high winds, uh, very heavy and intense rainfall, roads were impassable, so we had to be mindful of safety as well. Uh, so the answer to your question is, as soon as we had facts to hand, um, we've, we've disseminated those. It's been a very fast moving event. We've marshalled out our resources right from the start, um, mindful of the fact Auckland has gone through one of these before, uh, and so we've thrown everything at it and we are continuing to do that. With these centres um, being set up, do you have any um, a, like any range or any idea of how many numbers of, of families have been displaced? That's a very good question. We are, I just came off a call where we're endeavouring to get the first tranche of information from people out at the coalface because um, they will be a better place to answer that right now. That will be an ongoing process because we need to know what those numbers are to know what resourcing needs to be provided to, to support them. Um, as I say, it's still raining, we're still working through this uh, in the dark at the moment and still getting a sense of how many people are displaced. Uh, police uh, mentioned earlier to me uh, that they had 307, I think, incidents that they hadn't got to yet, um, simply because they're overwhelmed by the degree of damage and the number of people seeking assistance. So everybody's working really hard to get that information, um, but logistically it just takes time given the scale of this event and the number of people impacted. Now, are you confident you do have enough uh, centres set up and that they were set up uh, ahead of, well ahead of time to actually cater for those displaced? I think Under should. normal circumstances we would have been a uh, better place because those centres were planned as you say. Yeah. But when we went out to them we found that they'd been flooded, you know, they weren't fit to move people into. So what we've had to do is, is uh, look elsewhere and rapidly set up other centres, uh, some of them quite large. Uh, so that we have big hubs that people can go to uh, to seek shelter and support whilst um, you know, we get through the, the, the thick of this. This is a much more widespread event than what we've had in the past which have tended to be a m more localised and that's why it's a bit harder to get mm. a finger on the total uh, spread and those involved. And in terms of communication, my role is to communicate first of all with the officials and make sure that we, with the professionals, in the emergency sector to make sure that they had the support of the organisation that was needed for them. Um, that's, that was the communication channels that were more important right at the start to make sure that we had the people doing the right thing. I was listening to the right advice from the right people. I guess this has been your first um, emergency event since you've been at Mia. How was you? I guess how have you found this evening and the process of it all? Well, I think like everybody finds um, these very uh, traumatic and difficult. Um, and you have to uh, take your role seriously. And my role isn't to rush out with buckets. It's to be here uh, ensuring that the centre is well organised and that we are taking the appropriate steps at the appropriate time, not rushing into them uh, in response to um, n noise outside.
This is a formal, serious business, and the effects of it will go on for some time. And just to confirm one last time, you were happy with the um, stage at what a save emergency was cleared. You don't think it should have been brought forward earlier, but you're happy with when it was declared. Well, there's nothing to be happy about today, but um, am I confident that we did the right thing at the right time? Absolutely. We uh, were on standby for the emergency professionals to tell us at what time they would like me to make that step. It's a very serious step, it has consequences. They called upon it when they um, felt that it was necessary. And as soon as they called upon it, we were in a place to do that, and I commissioned it immediately. But it would have been irresponsible for me to rush ahead of the requirements and the recommendations of the professionals. This is not something that you just respond to a clamour of, of the public. It's an important, serious, statement and was taken appropriately but not happily it, it, it enables the, the right part of uh, the emergency response the emergency services in particular to get what they need when they need it um, and that's what happened so the moment that they said um, we need support here um, that was when the declaration was issued um, but as I say it's a step in an overall emergency response process um, so it was responding to the need at that particular time um, but the emergency response um, kicked off in the afternoon once the weather started to form up. So we've been at this for quite some time um, and it was just a, a formal step, as the Mayor has said, that needed to be taken um, to give additional powers and resources uh, to emergency services to, to deal with that stage of the emergency. It wasn't as if nothing was happening before that. Exactly, yeah. These people <coughs> were flat out and... Uh, and it, they wanted to uh, make sure that that next formal step, which has consequences, wasn't rushed into, and I followed advice of professionals. Thanks, everyone. Thank you for coming. I know it's late in the evening, and you probably had to come through a storm yourself to get here, but it, you fulfil an important function in relation to this event because we need to have you as part of this to disseminate sensible, moderate and well-informed advice to the public. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.